it's not based on um, our IQ. It's not based on um, how smart we are or how uneducated we are. It's not based on that. What God is dealing with in this word when it talks about fool, it, it comes from and is uh, synonymous with the word when you are ignorant. When you're ignorant. And, and then when we look at the word ignorant, um, the root word of the, the word ignorant is choosing to ignore. Mm -hmm. So on this morning, we're looking at the word fool from the vantage point of choosing to ignore. All right. and, and that's why God says, God says in verse number one uh, of Psalms 14 or 53, he starts off by saying, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have committed abominable injustice. There is no one who does good. God has looked down from heaven upon the sons of men to see if there is anyone who understands, who seeks after God. So what the Bible is explaining when we make it up in our mind that there is no God, the only thing that we are left to is corruption, sin, and abominable things. Uh -uh. When we choose to ignore God, we are left to our own devices. You can see a parallel, and, and actually this is uh, what um, Paul is quoting in the book of Romans when he talks about that uh, all have fallen short and came up uh, short of the glory of God, meaning that all of us have sinned and all of us have um, come short of the glory of God. And then he goes on to say that the wages of sin is death. And then he also talks about how when we choose to ignore there is a God, we are allowed to making things or putting things in the place of God, uh, erecting idol gods, right? When we are choose to uh, uh, choose to ignore the true and living God, we are left to our own devices to erect gods that are not gods, right? So he says, he says, he says, the fool chooses to ignore God, so he can en engage in all type of abominable things. See, when you are cognitive of God. It's hard to do some things when you are accountable to God, right? Amen. Anybody can testify about that? Amen. When, when God is on your conscience, when God is in your spirit, it is hard to do certain things when you know that God is paying attention to what you're doing. Amen. But when you say there ain't no God and ain't nobody going to see me, you know, uh, Brother Smith ain't around. Uh, uh, you know, Brother Keith ain't around. Uh, 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 Brother David ain't around. Brother, ain't, ain't nobody can see me, so, you know, I, I can do it. But when you are mindful that there is a God, you question or, or you are reluctant to engage in anything. How is this going to affect my relationship with the Lord? Mm -hmm. When you are cognitive That's right. of God. But when you make it up in your mind and you choose to ignore that there is a God, mm -hmm. you can engage in all type of activity and have a clear conscience. Amen. Amen. So he says the fool choose to ignore God. And I'm going somewhere. It's going to become crystal clear to what I'm saying when I turn over to this next passage. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, but, but he says, he says, now when we ignore, it frees us up to... Uh, walk in the lifestyle that we think is pleasurable. Well, mm -hmm. But I start about to tell somebody, even on this morning, there is a high cost to low living. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You can live low yes, for a while, yes, but there is a high cost mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. And, and when we choose to ignore God, sooner or later, we are going to have to face what we have sowed. Said there is a law of reaping and sowing. And, and we can live low, ignore God. We can think it's fun for a while, but then we're going to have to face everything that we engaged in. And, and sometimes we, we want to blame God and we, we think it's because of God. No, it's true. It's your choosing because you chose to ignore that there is a God, right? Yes, sir. Now, before we turn from some, 
The Bible talks about out of Zion. Verse number six. All that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion. When God restores his captive people, let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. This passage is referring to what Isaiah referred to in Isaiah the second chapter. Y'all remember over there in Isaiah the second chapter where Isaiah said, out of Zion yeah. shall the Lord spring. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just read it real quick. Uh, verse number one says, the word which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it will come about that in the last days the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations shall stream to it. Verse number three, and many people will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord's house of God of Jacob that he may teach us concerning his ways and that we may walk in his path and law, and the law will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Uh oh, lest I uh, make you too sleepy on this Easter morning, let me come down and, and turn to your neighbor and say, Wake up for a minute. Uh, he's coming on the floor for a second. Zion, Zion. Why is this important? In any study of the Old Testament, we know that. Jerusalem was the capital city of the children of Israel. Amen. Uh, Jerusalem, you know, that's where David established his throne. Jerusalem, where Solomon reigned from. Jerusalem was the capital city of the people of God. And, and when Jesus showed up on the scene, when, remember when he was grooming his 12 apostles, he, he, he would tell them, he said, I want you to go first to the house of Israel first. Go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the outermost parts of the earth. Out of Zion is where it starts. Y'all remember when Peter preached the first gospel sermon? Yes. Uh, uh, he preached, and the Bible says over 3,000 souls were added to the church. Amen. Yes. Uh, and and uh, from there. As preaching continued, the Lord continued to add to those who believed, those who were born again. And then the disciples, the apostles, they continued to spread out and go on into the outermost parts of the earth, right? Amen. So out of Zion is where uh, um, the church is birthed, where um, the, the word came forth with power and conviction out of Zion. And the way that God did it, he done it in such a way that you would have to be a fool to ignore what was taking place in Zion. Amen. Okay. When the power came, the Bible says it fell on those who were in the house. And when men seen it, it looked as a, a great fire on their head. Yeah. Okay, if you didn't get that, if you choose to ignore that, God done something else. When Peter began to speak, even though it was men from all different type of nations, they heard him in their own tongue. How can you ignore this? My Lord. My Lord. But, but, but the fool would choose to ignore this. Ain't nothing to that. No, no. See, 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 the kingdom didn't just come with word. It came with power as well. Amen. Out of Zion. Amen. God established it with power. But the fool is still ignored. Y'all got to get this. Y'all got to get this. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere with this. Yes. Okay. Fool or ignore that. All these signs, wonders that God doing it. God say, I'm not going give to give up on you because I know your mind is jaded. I know you're in darkness. I know you've been uh, uh, practicing foolishness for a long time. You ain't got all these signs as one. He said, I'm going to give you one more sign and one. If I be lifted up, I draw all men to me. Okay, okay. Amen. Ain't no man ever died and was resurrected from the grave. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to give you one more sign. If you choose to ignore this, you just want to be foolish. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible says Jesus was willing mm -hmm. to commit himself to beating, scourging, yeah. to be tried before men that he created, mm -hmm. who he should be trying. He allowed men to try him. 
And the Bible says he even allowed mankind to put him to death. But the reason that Jesus did it, because he didn't annoy us. See, see, he could have annoyed us. He could have annoyed the condition that we was in. But he didn't choose to annoy the condition that we were in because we were in bondage. We were in sin. Jesus didn't choose to annoy us when he was on the cross. He said, no, nah, I'm going to allow it because I got to redeem some people. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And he said, now, nah, if I, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, if I come out, this is the sign that I am who was prophesied about, right? Amen. So, so when Jesus rose from the grave, this was an indication of the fulfillment of the prophecy that out of Zion, mm -hmm. salvation, a savior, will come out. Now, I'm about to make it crystal clear while I go back to the podium. Uh, turn over to uh, 1 Samuel, chapter number 25, and this is where we'll conclude from. 1 Samuel, chapter number uh, 25. And look what the Bible says. And, and some of you may be familiar with this, this passage already, but I will encourage you to uh, read it in its entirety. Just for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it in its entirety, but let's look at verse number 9. 1 Samuel chapter number 25, and we'll read verse number 9 first. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, when David's young men came, they spoke to Nabal according to all the words in David's name. Then they waited. But Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants today who are each breaking away from his master. Look, look what the Bible says. The Bible says when David's servants came to Nabal. Now, let me, let me just catch y'all up, who, who, those who haven't read it. David was kind of a freelancer or uh, he was a contractor. And he would guard for different people. And he, he uh, rendered some services to Nabal. And he had guarded uh, his sheep and his household. Uh, he was kind of like a, 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 a bodyguard agency that you would bring in. And he rendered some services to Nabal. And as a result, Nabal was protected. As a result, Nabal was prosperous. But when it came time for payday, David sent his services and said, now nah, it's time for us to collect, right? And the Bible says, Nabal, just like in Psalms 14, uh, he chose to ignore what David done on his behalf, and he asked the servants, he said, who is David? Amen. Excuse me? <laughs> the one who protected you? The one who guarded you? The one who kept your, your kingdom? The one who kept your family together? The one who protected you? The one who blessed you? And now he said, who is David, right? Uh -huh. I, I, I encourage you to read it in, in its entirety. But look what verse number 23 says. Verse number 23, I, just for the sake of time, I won't read it all. But look what verse number 23 says. The Bible says, and this is um, Nabal's wife, Abigail. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and dismounted from her donkey and fell on her face before David and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, On me alone, my Lord, be the blame, and please let your maidservant speak to you and listen to the words of your maidservant. Please do not let my Lord pay attention to this worthless man, Nabal, for as in his name, he is a fool. Um, I, I, if y'all don't see it yet, y'all don't see it yet, y'all might not see it. We understand that everyone who came before Jesus, if you study the prophets, you study those who God sent before Jesus, all of them had some characteristic or some attribute of Jesus Christ. Amen. They were type of Christ. 
They were a shadow of what would come. If you study the book of Hebrews, you will see where they talk about how Moses had a house. He was a type of Christ. But it was not Christ. In the book of Hebrews, it says Moses had a house, but Jesus has his own house, which is superior to the house of Moses. Amen. So everyone that he sent was a type or they had some type of attribute. That's why the Bible talks about when Jesus comes, he's going to sit on the throne as David, but his throne is going to be an everlasting throne. Amen. That's what differs him from David, right? Amen. So when David came to Nabal, he sent his servants. Ah, uh, you know, we, we just want to collect. I, I'm not asking for nothing extra. You, you know what I've done for you? Um, I, I'm just asking for what's rightfully mine. I, I'm not asking for no favors. It, it's just your reasonable service. Oh, y'all, y'all don't see this yet? Okay, okay, okay. Jesus. See, we sit from a vantage point of what Jesus have done. Before Jesus, they looked forward to what Jesus would do. But now we sit from a vantage point from what Jesus has already done. And, and now Jesus is sending his servants into the vineyard. Jesus died on your behalf. Jesus wants you to live the abundant life. Jesus wants you to come out of captivity. Yeah. Jesus wants you to be blessed. Jesus wants you to come to Sunday school. Jesus wants you to come to Sunday morning worship. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Jesus wants you to come to Wednesday night Bible. Jesus wants you uh, uh, to go out and tell people that he has risen with all power in his hand. Jesus, what he already done for you. He just want to collect on that. And the Bible says, just as Nabal is still people today. Who is Jesus? And like I say, it takes a fool. Because when we look around, the Bible even says that Jesus itself declares that there is a God. Yeah. When I look at the moon and the sun, when I look at the cloud, when I look at myself, to ignore this. Mm -hmm. It takes a fool to say that we made ourselves. Yes, yes. It, it takes a fool mm -hmm. to ignore the beauty and how intricate and how uh, meticulous and how uh, well thought out God uh, made everything that we now experience. Yes, yes. I could call the roll, but when we look at the different systems that's in our body, how complex and how precise it is. Yeah. Hold your, as I said, hold your breath for two minutes and see how good you'll be doing today. <laughs> but but it precise, God precisely made us that we inhale, exhale, yeah. where we're able to get the oxygen that we need. God precisely made us where our heart beat yeah. so often that the blood would circulate within our body. He, he precisely made us so the waste that comes in the toxins that come in our body, that it have a way to go out. Do I get any more graphic than that? He precisely made this intentionally. It takes a fool to ignore that. That's right. He precisely, intentionally made us above the animals. Where we can make a choice. I'm talking about logical. Yes. See, some people, they, 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 try to, they try to act like faith is just walking in the dark blind. Now, it's, it's not walking in the dark blind. There's ample evidence yeah. that Jesus lived, he died, and he resurrected. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the Bible says when he appeared, there appeared over 400 men who seen him after he got out the grave. This is eyewitness testimony. That's correct. It, look, look, look. When you go to court of law, it only takes one person to convict you. The Bible says 400 people seen him at once. That's right. This ain't just, oh, you just believe. No, it's evidence yeah. that he died when they went to the tomb. Where is he? 
They looking all in the tomb. They looking in the rap. I see the rap. I see the handkerchief that was on his face. But where is he? Then the Bible says they remember that he said that if I die, I'm going to be resurrected on the third day. But it takes a fool to ignore all that and say, no, I'm just going to do my own thing. And wherever I land, I land. No, no, it takes a fool to believe that. Right. And listen to this, listen to this, I'm closing, I'm staying on um, 1 Samuel, Samuel 25 chapter. Look what happened with Nabal, whose name mean fool. He chose to ignore David, who was a type of Christ, didn't render what he needed to render to him. And the Bible says, uh, uh, in verse number uh, 36 of this same chapter, being that he ignored David, the Bible says, when, when Abigail finally came and told him, what all took place due to his ignorance, the Bible says that this guy, Nabal, mm -hmm. whose name Foolish, he's in this house having a party. Y'all yeah. <laughs> y'all see this? Yeah. See, when you choose to ignore God, you can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, then Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he was holding a feast in his house. Mm -hmm. Like the feast of a king, and Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. So she did not tell him anything at all until the morning light. But in the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, after he turned up, had his party, when the wine was gone, he sew it up. The Bible says, uh uh, his wife told him these things. His heart died within him, so that he became as stone. About 10 days later, the Lord struck Nabal and he died. Amen. See, it takes a fool. Amen. After everything Christ has done for us, mm -hmm. just for pleasure, for a season, you're going to know what he's done so we can have eternal life, the abundant life, life after, just for pleasure, for a season. The Bible says, he was having a feast as a king. Wine flowing. What, what's, what stuff y'all like at y'all party? Uh, lobster, <laughs> shrimp, Jack Daniels, whatever. He was strong. And the Bible said they were having a good time for a season. Well, Abigail strategically waited. Okay, I know he drunk right now. I know he going to ignore this right now. She waited till he sobered up. And the Bible says when she confronted him with what took place, mm -hmm. he became a stone because he ignored it before. Mm -hmm. Now he's sober. He became a stone. And the Bible says 10 days later, he died. Amen. Amen. Sin is just a short time. Mm -hmm. It's only for a season. Life is but a vapor. It appears for a moment and then soon passes away. We ought not choose to ignore what God is telling us in this dispensation, in this time. But it takes a fool to ignore all the bountiful blessings that God has bestowed on mankind. Amen. Jesus died on our behalf. He died. He paid a price that he did not owe. He died for our sins, not his sins. He, he, he became Lord and Savior to everyone that would embrace him. And even on this morning, even on this morning, that, that salvation is still available. The Bible says, hear the word, but don't ignore the word. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Don't, don't say, well, I, I, get, I get that right some other time. You know, when I get older, that's when I take care of it. You might not get old. Amen. I'm sure Abigail and, and Nabal, well, Nabal, rather, he, he probably thought he had time to get it right with David. But the Bible says 10 days later, he died. Never had an opportunity to get it right with David. After David had done everything that he did on his behalf, after everything Christ has done on our behalf, 
that they do hear his voice hard not to heart, get it right even on that day. The Bible says you must hear the word, believe the word. Be willing to confess. Remember when Abigail went to David, she said, see, Bible, king, my husband is a fool. Mm. No, everybody in the kingdom don't want to suffer that. That's just him. Mm. And David had mercy, David had mercy on her and the rest of uh, Nabal's community because of her, because she humbled herself. Amen. We got to be willing to repent. Yes. We got to be willing to be born again. Amen. We got to be willing to become a part of the twice born community. Mm -hmm. We all were born naturally. But in order for us to see the kingdom of God, we have to be born of water and spirit. And you can do that even on this morning. As a child of God, as a child of God, you just need prayer in one area or another. There's some things you've been ignoring. 